Mountains. And we do have a delegation here before us from the Heritage Hills and Lakeshore Highlands. We have Susan and Rick sitting up there. Well, welcome and please go ahead. Yeah, there's okay. a little button, perfect. Well, good morning everyone once again. And for those of you who are online, uh, I do have a handout and I believe it was scanned and it will be sent to you. I, I think it's already okay, been circulated. It's already done? So. Okay, good stuff. So I'm going to sit down now. It'll be a lot easier to read. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so good morning, Chairperson and members of the board. My name is Susan Biguet, and I am a member of the Heritage Hills Lakeshore Highlands Community Association Executive Board. My home is connected to the private sewage and water utilities. I have been asked here to come here today to make a brief presentation to you on behalf of our whole community. This includes Heritage Hills, Lakeshore Highlands, Vintage Views, and Chadwell Place. And I'm here to ask you to approve the process of converting private sewer and water utilities to public ownership. Many community members would have liked to have come to speak to you today to tell you their personal stories of purchasing lots, buying house plans, retaining builders, and not being able to get a building permit after putting out hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a building permit, uh, uh, for leaving them in financial peril and personal distress. Others want to speak to the detailed technical deficiencies and neglect of maintenance and repair to the sewer plant, and yet others to speak to spiraling water costs and continually declining quality of product and maintenance and supply issues. However, I will try and paint a brief, clear, and concise picture of what exists in our community vis-a-vis -vis the privately owned and operated sewer and water utilities that serve our essential needs. The sewer system was commissioned in 2001 and from the first day of operation was non-compliant with the operating certificate. Mr. Johnny Anchez took ownership of the sewer and water systems in 2012. Since that time, both utilities have imposed substantial increases in rates on the users. The sewer system went into significant disrepair in 2018 due to a lack of maintenance. The Ministry of Environment ordered major repair and improvement to the effluent field. Subsequent to these repairs taking place, a catastrophic failure of the sewage system occurred in November of 2019, when the effluent began flowing down a slope onto Parsons Road and across and towards Skaha Lake. Now I'm sure many of you would not like to have seen this in your communities. The effluent field has been repaired, but there are still many compliance and regulatory issues outstanding. Now for more details on this, please see your handouts on tabs number one and two. The sewer system was designed to operate for 30 to 50 years, but failed in 18 years. As well as orders to comply and administrative penalties on or about August 2021, the Ministry of Environment ordered the RDOS to cease issuing building permits for any home that is required to be connected to the sewer system. The owner, Mr. Johnny Anches of Vintage Use Development, has confirmed the following four points. One, he does not have the knowledge or expertise to run either a sewage treatment system or a water utility system. Number two, the cost to bring the sewer utility into compliance is estimated to be $1 million. Number three, the Ministry of Environment is requiring a $2 million bond to secure repair works. And number four, Mr. Andres has signed off on his desire to sell both utilities to the RDOS and has publicly stated his desire to do so as published in the Penticton Herald of November this year. If ownership is retained by Mr. Anges, there is a question of when or if repairs and compliance would be achieved and the subsequent possibility of catastrophic failure consequences on all of our community served by the sewer system. Under the current private ownership, all repair costs are put back to the users. But in public ownership, such as the RDOS taking over the, the private utilities, Provincial grants and loans are available to the RDOS to assist in offsetting the costs to the ratepayers, as well as any grants for studies to facilitate the conversion. 
The prohibition on building permits in the Heritage Hills community not only impacts the individual lot purchaser, but also the construction industry and the real estate industry. As millions of dollars in new assessments for the RDOS are being blocked, realtors say resales are falling through because of the non-compliant sewer system and the non-issuance of building permits. You must realize this current situation will only worsen in the future. And now is the time to correct an unacceptable situation and ensure the future well-being of our citizens. On to the private water system. In 2012, when Mr. Johnny Anch has acquired the water system, he immediately applied for a rate increase based on the need for more funds for system maintenance and operation and subsequently applied again in 2019 for an additional increase in rates. We now pay $972 annually, more than double what we paid nine years ago of $456 a year. In written form, Mr. Anja suggested that increased testing and higher water quality standards were part of the justification for these higher rates. Our community now pays double what other Okanagan communities are paying, resulting in the highest sewer and water rates in the Okanagan Valley. Again, if you'd like to see more details, see your tab number three in your handout. In a verbal presentation to residents at a community association meeting, Mr. Andrews committed that he would develop and provide a communication vehicle for residents to keep them informed of water testing results and maintenance works. He committed to installing sand filters and ultraviolet light treatment of the water and to supplying operating and capital plans and a higher level of maintenance for the system. None of his written or verbal agreements have been met. Water quality has declined. There is now significant amount of silt in the water. We've had resounding complaints from our residents about large amounts of silt in their tap filters. Water system interruptions have occurred often. Water system pipes have broken frequently. Repairs to water leaks have either not been done by Lakeshore Waterworks and have to have, were done by Ames Roads, who are chasing Lakeshore Waterworks for payment of the work. Some of the work has not been done at all by anyone, and the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure is currently investigating one such situation here in Heritage Hills. Water testing results are now only available sporadically. Water is essential to life. We implore you to approve the start of the conversion process for the sewer system owned and operated by Vintage Views Developments and the water system owned and operated by Lakeshore Waterworks with justice and fairness. The current RDOS utility acquisition policy, actually I have a copy right here, which is board approved and found on your website. And again, I have details in the handout if you look at number four. The policy states, the regional district of Okanagan Similkameen believes that essential services are best provided by government, where citizens can elect representatives interested in their well-being and will operate the service in the most effective and efficient manner possible. Further, potable water and sanitary sewage systems are determined to be essential to a high quality of life, and citizens should expect their local government to assist in acquiring and operating those systems where ratepayers to the system concur. The, the informal citizen petition director, Matt Taylor, is delivering today. Again, for more details on the petition, you can see in your handout, number five, shows without any doubt that the significant majority of property owners support both utilities being converted and run by the OD, RDOS as public utilities and are aware, and they agree that they will need to contribute to the cost of acquisition, repair, and upgrades required for the system. Thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, I have Rick Sauter here who can answer any of your questions. All right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the presentations. I'll go to the board and ask if there's any questions for the delegation. I see some hands here. I'll start with Director Taylor and then over to Director Monteith. Go ahead. I'd just like to express my sincere thanks to uh, Ms. Begay and uh, Rick Sauter for making this presentation. 
and uh, appreciate also the, the many others that have been affected by this issue and are also, uh, some of them are here today. Um, and uh, would like to thank my predecessor actually uh, for his work in this area, uh, Mr. Ron Oberek. And um, lastly, I'd also like to thank um, Mr. Johnny Anges for giving us some consideration and uh, coming to the table and signing the appropriate documents to get the process started. Okay. Um, so th those are my thanks. Um, I would I'd like to just ask or just make one point of clarification at the start of your presentation. I may have misheard, but um, we're only considering the due diligence study at this moment. So we're not looking at it approve any vote that takes place later in the meeting is just with respect to the due diligence study. Okay. Thank you. Director Monteith. Through the chair, I just want to share that the community of Caledon has also been watching and I look forward to the study and the results and coming into a public utility is very important. So thank you. Okay. I see a hand from Director Knodel. Go ahead. Thank you. And through the chair, uh, I'm fully in support of what, what you folks need there. It's a terrible situation. Uh, but as someone who inherited a, a situation like similar in water, um, I, I assume that you're moving ahead with a, an engineering study to tell you exactly what you need and what your costs will be before you jump into this. Uh, it, it, it's daunting. Uh, and with Willowbrook Water, it was uh, our water now is around twelve hundred dollars a year per, per household. Um, just so you know, it's the scale of the economy of scale is one of the problems that you'll look at, and some of the comparisons you have are much larger units or, or much larger systems. And there's there's a lower cost with a larger system, but uh, yeah, my my hope is that you go ahead with this. We should not have private systems out there; they just never work. They're never maintained, and in the end of the day, the residents suffer. Thank you. Okay. Seeing any more questions for the delegation? All right. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, we will be considering this later on in the agenda for sure. Looking forward to positive results. <laughs> All right. We move on in our agenda down to development services.